The British commander was Douglas Haig. Many British soldiers remembered him with hatred. One such soldier was Fred Pearson. The biggest murderer of the lot was Haig. I'm very bitter. Always have been and always will be. He lived 50 kilometers behind the lines, and that's about as near as he ever got. I, I don't think he knew what a trench was like. Critics of Haig described soldiers like Fred Pearson as lions led by donkeys. Those who defend Haig say casualties were no higher than those of other countries. They also point out that, in the end, he did what any general has to do. He led his troops to victory. In June 1916, Haig planned an attack along the River Somme. It was to start with a massive bombardment of German positions over several days, which Haig believed would destroy the German lines. Then the Allied soldiers would just walk across no man's land and capture the enemy's trenches. Kenneth McArdle was a second lieutenant from Ireland. Like many of the other soldiers, he was inspired by the number of shells and mines that he saw arriving at the front. I am not addicted to boasting, but I think if he could see all the guns behind, all the grenades, trench mortars and other stores in front, if he knew how thoroughly ready we are and if he could conceive how we are longing for the day, I think if he knew, the Kaiser would cut his losses and take poison. What Haig didn't know was that the Germans had built deep dugouts which protected them from the shelling. On July the 1st, 1916, the British detonated the first of five massive mines planted underneath the German line. The British soldiers were ready to attack across no man's land. Sergeant Fellows remembered how he felt as he waited for the order to go over the top. How do you feel as you stand in a trench, awaiting the whistle to blow? Are you frightened, anxious, shaking with fear? Or are you ready to go? No one is anxious to go, my friend. It's a job which must be done. Discipline ensures we obey the rules. Though for many, their last day has come. The attack was a disaster. As we advanced, German shells littered the battlefield with dead and wounded. All around us and in front, men dropped or staggered about. I found a sergeant, and shouting in his ear, asked where were his officers. All gone, sir, he shouted back. There were 57,000 British and colonial casualties on the first day of the battle. As night fell, no man's land came alive as thousands of wounded soldiers began crawling back to their trenches. Only in November, did Haig call off the battle. There were over one million casualties, 620,000 British and French, and 450,000 German soldiers were killed, wounded, or missing. The Allied line had advanced by only five miles at most. The next year, in 1917, Haig planned a new advance at Passchendaele. He'd learnt some of the lessons of the Somme. The British made better use of their heavy guns. They had more shells, aircraft, and tanks. The troops had become more experienced and used to battle. On Easter Monday, 
the Canadians, British and South Africans advanced three and a half miles. The attack was so successful that King George V paid a visit to the battlefield. The fighting resumed just as the wettest summer and autumn in years began. Haig and his commanders ordered repeated attacks across what was now a swamp. Haig didn't realize how muddy the ground had become. He didn't like criticism or discussion, so none of the officers around him told him what it was like. Men would get stuck in the mud and be found dead days later. Whole carts and horses disappeared without trace. Three months passed before Haig called off the campaign. Haig's forces had advanced only five miles. Total casualties for both sides. Half a million men killed, wounded or missing. The controversy surrounding Haig continues. Whatever his defenders may argue, it's hard to understand how he was prepared to accept such loss of life amongst his men.